And welcome to all of you who are viewing us on TV this morning or on YouTube. And again, also, we want to welcome all our mothers, a very special Mother's Day today. And so we remember them in our liturgy this morning as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And, and the Lord be with you. My dear friends, as we prepare ourselves now to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our own sins and to ask the Lord for pardon and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenist complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so he chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch to convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. A word, the word of God continued to spread 
and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a, large num even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-stringed lyre, chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him a living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in in the sight of God, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that me, you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, the word of the Lord. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may also be. Where I'm going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you knew me, then you would also know my Father. From now on you do know him, and you have seen him. And Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? 
Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I'm going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. This morning I want to welcome all the mothers here. A very happy Mother's Day. And again, as we think about Mother's Day, there's a writer in writing about mothers proposed the idea that mothers are the same all over. She speculated that mothers of famous people would probably have said the same thing about their own children that mothers say today. For example, Paul Revere's mother could have said, I don't care where you think you're going, young man. Midnight is past your curfew. Columbus's mother said, I don't care what you discovered. You could have written. Michelangelo's mother wrote, can't you, can't you paint on the walls like other children? Do you have to have any idea how hard it is to get the stuff off the ceiling? Abraham Lincoln's mother might have wrote, what is with that stovepipe hat? Couldn't you just wear a baseball cap like the other kids? Albert Einstein's mother said, maybe, but it's your senior picture. Couldn't you do something about your hair? George Washington's mother might have wrote, the next time I catch you throwing money across the Potomac, you can kiss your allowance goodbye. Jonah's mother might have said, that's an interesting story. Now tell me where you've been for the last three days. Thomas's Edison mother could have said, of course I'm proud that you invented the electric light bulb. Now turn it off and get to bed. So as we think about Mother's Day and our readings today, Jesus is saying the way, the truth, and the life, and our need to let go were the phrases that are the central message of this gospel. A story of a man while climbing a cliff to take pictures, lost his balance and fell off the cliff. And on the way down, he grabbed a tree, a tree limb. Peering up from the deep canyon, he called out, help please, is anyone up there? After some silence, a voice answered, yes, I am here, who are you? The man shouted, it is me, the Lord. Greatly relieved, the man said, thank you. Have you come to rescue me? Yes, said the Lord, let go, I will catch you. The man thought for a second, then asked, is there anyone else up there? We can understand the man's reluctant to let go, but there's no one else up there. In the gospel this Sunday, Jesus exhorts us to trust God and in him, and he tells us quite plainly, I am the way. He does not say a way, but the way. If you want to go to the Father, there's no other way than except through Christ. In last Sunday's gospel, we use the image of the gate, of the sheepfold referring to him. This time he calls himself the way. Considering the resurrection, the risen Lord is not only the gate, but also the way to where he wants us to follow. Thomas, being realistic, asked Jesus, Lord, do you want? We do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Thomas imagines that if Jesus could give them a simple road map or some directions to where he's going, they'll surely get there. And Jesus surprised them saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In short, do not ask for directions, for Jesus is the way to the Father. Just let go and follow him. Do not speculate, for he is the truth. If you want to live, go to Jesus and remain in him, who is life itself. The gospel helps us to become more deeply aware that to Christ is to find the way, truth, and the life. To seek the truth elsewhere is to stumble and fall. To follow the risen Lord is to find the fullness of life in God. 
If we take another direction, we will be lost and die on the way. What the risen Lord is offering us in this life itself, in the fullness of truth, in terms of eternity, Jesus also tells us and his disciples to find him is to find the Father, because we can only reach the Father through Jesus, because the Son is in the Father and the Father is in the Son. Our union with the Father through Christ will also enable us to perform the same work that Christ does. The message of this week is to remember, like the man hanging on the tree limb, Jesus challenges us to let go, to risk, to trust that he will rescue us no matter how deep the cliff. They invite us to a total faith and trust in God. We are invited to get to know Jesus, who is the truth more, for to know him is to know the Father and the Spirit. I believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. The first deacons bore witness to Christ by serving the community of faith. Let us also take part in a mutual service to one another. For those baptized this year and for all the baptized in the world, that Christ's risen glory be our constant inspiration and joy, let us pray to the Lord. For the leaders and citizens of powerful countries, that their commitments to peace and justice inspire others. Let us pray to the Lord. For mothers, women who cannot conceive, and those who have lost children, that they receive grace to enjoy their blessings and bear their crosses, let us pray to the Lord. For young people, especially those most in need, that they find true support in those who love them and accept God's call to a full and happy life, let us pray to the Lord. For everyone in this local church, that we show forth God's love in word and deed, let us pray to the Lord. God of love and mercy, we thank you for the gift of faith. Listen to the petitions we present to you for those in need, and grant our prayers through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. My dear friends, let us still continue to pray that my sacrifice and yours, that it may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we've come to know your truth, that we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to allot you, O Lord. But above all, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true lamb who's takes, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic host sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Hello, brothers and sisters. On March 20th, I made the difficult decision to suspend masses with the congregation here in our diocese. It caused a lot of anxiety and sadness for all of us, me included especially. But it was necessary in light of the pandemic, the warnings and the reality. And though we're not out of the woods yet, I believe we are in a position to reopen our churches, to invite our congregations to come back. As this happens shortly, just know that it will be different. We won't be able to all come back to church like we did before right away. We'll have limited congregations. Each parish will have to figure out, one, if they are able right now to open up, and two, how they can do that by roping off some pews perhaps or by assigning people to sit at different parts of the church. As well, you, you will probably be required to wear a mask initially. Other things will look different. The sign of peace will take place with a simple bow or a nod. We'll encourage you to receive communion in the hand. There, will be, there may be other changes as well, but we're just asking for patience. The Sunday obligation will continue to be dispensed, so you don't have to come on a Sunday right now. If you'd like to come, maybe you would want to come on a Tuesday or Thursday so that we could space it out so that more people in the parish can come in person to Mass. We will continue to live stream Masses, so if you're sick, if you're at risk, if you're caring for anyone who is at risk, or if you're worried, then please stay home and participate as you have been online. Anytime we go anywhere in public is we bring a risk to ourselves, of course, if we go to the store or somewhere else. Um, that certainly is true in our churches. Just know that, that there would be a risk when we gather together. But we believe that in a limited, small way, this is not only possible, but it's a good thing as we grow in our faith together. May God bless our world. May God bless our diocese. May, may God bless you and your families always. Well, as you can see, it's Mother's Day, and we have a small crowd, but again, people took the chance and they came out. And so we're going to continue this for, for a while yet, just until we get comfortable in making sure that we have everything that we need. And again, those of you who are watching by TV this morning, you're more than welcome to contribute in any way that you can, and we would appreciate it as well. But hopefully someday you'll be joining us as well. And let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to a newness of life through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go now in peace.